Okay, so we have said that RAS is activated by receptors that receive signals for cell to divide. How do we know that? Let's look at a simple experiment. Fibroblasts can be induced to proliferate by treatment with a mixture of plated drive growth factor, PDGF, and epidermal growth factor. Both these growth factors activate receptor tyrosine kinases. If we inject RAS antibodies, antibodies are molecules that, special molecules that can bind a specific type of molecule. We will talk about that in uh, future modules. But here, what I would like to emphasize that antibody molecules, RAS antibody molecules, when they're injected in the cells, they will go find RAS, they will bind it, sequester it, and prevent it from functioning. So if we inject RAS antibodies into the cell and make these growth factors, PDGF and EGF, available to the cell, cells will not be able to divide or proliferate. Conversely, if we inject RAS, a special type of RAS into cells that is constitutively active, meaning that this RAS has a mutation and it cannot get rid of its GTP. So it's always in on state. So if such a RAS is injected into the fibroblasts and we don't give the growth factors to these fibroblasts, these fibroblast cells will still proliferate. They'll keep on dividing just as if the growth factors were there. However, the growth factors are not there. So this is a simple experiment that shows that RAS is somehow activated by these receptors which interact with PDGF and EGF. What happens after RAS is activated? RAS activates another protein called RAF. RAF in turn activates another protein called MEC. Here I'll point out here's a RAF, here's a MEC. So RAF, RAS activates RAF, RAF activates MEC, and MEC activates MAPK. MAPK is basically abbreviation for mitogen activated protein. We know what my, mitosis is. So a protein that can cause mitosis or mitogen, it acts as a mitogen causing cell division. So this is a, a response to a growth factor, how cells respond to a growth factor. Also, I would like to mention and emphasize here that each step of the way, there's a signal amplification. We have talked about that as a common theme of signaling cascade. We one molecule receives a signal, it passes on that signal, gives that information to another molecule, or that molecule basically will generate several other molecules, will modify function of several other molecules. So ultimately, activated MAPK enters the nucleus and causes, activates genes that will cause cells to divide. I would like to mention here, it is important that you know that there's alternative names for that system. For example, in some cases, RAF is, for example, called MAP kinase 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 because ultimately it is phosphorylating a protein that will phosphorylate MAP kinase. And MEC is called MAP kinase kinase and MAP kinase is, of course, MAP kinase. So when MAP kinase is activated, it will basically result, it can result in activation of certain proteins or it can alter the gene expression. Just as important, I have to mention that these names are generic names. There are, for example, many types of MAP kinase kinases, MAP kinases, and MAP kinase kinase kinases. So depends upon the rest of the cellular machinery, which of these particular molecules will be activated. And how that is done? That is done by scaffold proteins, I will show you that later, but first of all, let me tell you about the switches. We have talked about one type of switch, the GTP switch. The proteins, for example, we talked about RAS or G protein. They exist in two forms, on and off, and that depends upon whether they are bound to GTP or GDP. The other type of switches are the proteins that are either in off state or on state, and that depends whether they are bound to a phosphate group or they are without the phosphate group. So two proteins, kinases, phosphatases, they can turn on and off proteins by adding or removing 
phosphate groups it is such an important this protein phosphorylation is such an important phenomena that about a third of the proteins are phosphorylated and 2% of the genes encode in the in the genome encode for kinases so switches are very important play a very important role in biology i was telling you how does cell know which map kinase 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 to activate or which particular molecule to activate when a signal is received that depends upon the type of the cell machinery of the cell and also several other factors genetic factors environmental factors such control is generally is exerted by scaffold proteins for example you will see in this example here there is a scaffold 1 and it can accommodate kinase a it can accommodate kinase b and kinase c this scaffold protein is restricting how the signal is transmitted it is transmitted from a b to c on the other scenario protein kinase a is activated in this scenario as well but it is not activating protein kinase b because this cell does not have scaffold 1 it has scaffold 2 and scaffold 2 does not permit binding of kinase b so in this case the signal from kinase a is being transmitted to kinase domain of the scaffold protein which is transmitting it to the kinase d kinase so again map kinase 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 or raf or mec these are generic names it depend there are several different versions of these proteins in different cells so this is how cells can restrict or focus the incoming signal to a specific target using scaffold scaffolds is one of the ways they could do it the other issue that we want to address is how do we know that two proteins interact gerb2 for example interacts with sos or jeff how do we know simple experiment it's called yeast to hybrid system or fish bait experiment as you know the proteins which act as transcription factors have two domains one domain binds the dna the other domain recruits the rna polymerase two domains so if we somehow are able to split these two domains we and attach these two domains to two different molecules we can study this by the way cleaving these two domains and attaching to other molecules is not done at protein level it is done at dna level remember we talked about restriction enzymes restriction endonucleases you can cut specific segments of dna and patch them with different dna so let's look at this here we have a question whether this protein pink protein interacts with the green protein or not this is our question so what we do is we take a transcription factor and splits its two domains here's the dna binding domain of this particular transcription factor and here is the domain which recruits other transcription factors or ultimately rna polymerase so we introduce these two proteins into a system this generally done in in um, yeast that's why it's called yeast to hybrid system so when we do that this transcription factor is ultimately going to result in a production of a protein so if these two proteins interact it will result in transcription of a particular gene to which this transcription factor actually attaches to so if we detect the presence of gene product in in our system this means that these two domains were interacting this is one of the ways people figure out which protein interacts with the other protein inside the cell we could do it in a simpler way in, uh, we could do it with for example biochemists can do the same thing in a column but column is not a cell so if you want to know if two proteins interact inside the cell or not this would be one of the ways you could do it 